I'm sure a lot of you out there probably recognize this. This is the Commodore 64, and this was one of the first really immensely popular home computers. And if any of you are musically inclined, you probably know that this has the SID sound chip in it, and it's a really fantastic sound chip. This is one of the first home computers with a really good sound chip in it. And it has three oscillators, and each oscillator has uh, four different waveforms that it can do. It can do uh, saw, triangle, pulse, and a noise. It's actually, it's, most people call it a white noise, but it's actually a pink noise because there is a pitch to it. But in any case, programming for the Commodore 64 is usually not terribly difficult, but it is kind of tricky to get to the, the sound capabilities. So if you want to use this in some sort of musical application, it is kind of difficult to work it in. But what I'm going to show you today is a really quick and easy way of turning uh, this standard bread box here into a little mini synthesizer. So the first thing you're going to want to know is how do I connect this to a standard mixing board? Now if you look in the back here we have our normal RF output and this goes to the standard coax RF connector that we use for our TV. Now what I have this sitting on top of, and I apologize I'm sort of working in tight quarters here, is two demodulators and what that does is it changes the signal from RF to composite. So we end up with a standard RCA audio and that's what I actually connect into the mixing board and you can find these on eBay and that sort of thing pretty cheap. So the next thing you're going to need is this guy and this is the Atari synth cart and I did not make this. Um, this I bought from Atari Age and it's made by the same guy who actually made the synth cart for the 2600. And of course there's a lot more possibilities with the Commodore 64 than there were with the Atari 2600 and this makes full use of them and makes everything especially easy. So what we do is we just plug that into our cartridge port here in the back. Okay. The next thing you're going to need is the incredible music keyboard and what this is is just an overlay. You can see it right here and you literally just lay this over top of the Commodore 64 keyboard and then you can press these keys and the synth card is actually made to work with this. So this basically becomes your synthesizer. Now you may notice on this one if you're familiar with this that this looks a little different than others and that's because I've got these two little potentiometers on here and I actually got these out of two busted uh, paddle controllers for the 2600 and if you don't want to do this you can just use regular paddle, paddle controllers plug them into the controller port and this one uh, I think controls your LFO and this one is assignable so you can actually uh, if you some of you guys out there like to turn knobs you can do that and uh, and control your sounds so now we have it turned on and just right off the bat you can see we've got some interesting sounds here and generally this will do since there are three oscillators you can do three notes at a time so um, it's pretty useful you can also see there's only uh, slightly less than two octaves on this keyboard but they fix that by using these for octave shift so this is on the lowest octave already so you can change your octave like that now you can change the type of sound that's coming out with the row of keys right here. So this is actually Z is what, what this sound uh, is here and then you can change it to different things. 
we got this nice one that's kind of a fit together. Um, <laughs> how about, uh, let's see. Anybody? All right, uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, kind of like some of these that have sort of the the uh, portamento in between, sort of the slide in between notes, those are kind of cool. Let's see. Um, now I'm going to show you this little knob up here. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with this. Let's see. Sometimes you have to be careful with how you combine the notes, though. Everything sounds pretty good now. If you play major chords, you notice the third's really out of tune. So that can be a problem sometimes. Uh, sometimes if you voice things a little differently, maybe with a fifth at the bottom, it's not quite as bad. Uh, still kind of sounds like crap. Maybe. Yeah, I like that. So in any case, that's that's basically how you use it, and that's that's pretty much everything. Now, like I said, this this second knob here is assignable. Unfortunately, I've lost the instructions for this, so I don't remember how to do the assignments. And there's also on-screen uh, graphics that you can look at while you're doing all this, but I I don't really have a screen I can use right here. So, so that was a quick look at how to turn your Commodore 64 into a pretty versatile and pretty portable synthesizer. So next time you're going to a gig, be sure to take this with you.